What's going on everybody? Welcome back to The Vault. My name is Money and today we are going to be talking about day two reveals of FunCon. Now FunCon is Funko's alternative way of releasing exclusives as opposed to doing San Diego Comic-Con this year because San Diego this year, just like last year, got canceled. So this is Funko's little mini Comic-Con. The exclusives will be releasing the first week of August. And if you have not watched me react to day one reveals, well, that'll be linked in the description down below and also linked at the end of this video on the end card. And I would like to preface that I am only going to be talking about the reveals that officially came from Funko's Instagram and Twitter hourly announcements. I won't be talking about any leaks. I will not be talking about anything from Fun TV. I'm going to be taking these announcements hour by hour from day two. So the first reveal of the day was Star Wars and we have Across the Galaxy Ray and Star Wars Rebels Imperial Commando. Now guys, I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't know a lot about Star Wars. It's not my thing. I've, I've seen all the movies once, but I haven't watched any of the spinoffs such as Star Wars. Is this Clone Wars? No, this is Rebels. I haven't seen Rebels. I haven't seen Clone Wars. So I can't talk about Imperial Commando that much. I do apologize. But if you're excited for it, I'm very happy for you. The Across the Galaxy Ray is a new series that Funko is doing. They've been doing it a few times this year. I know they did a Qui-Gon Jinn, which Danny had added to her collection this year. And they're going back and they're doing characters on different planets. And this Ray is another example of that. I think it's a cool series to revisit some characters that maybe don't have pops or had pops a long time ago. Ray, however, feels a little... It feels a little annoying because there was just a brand new set of pops for the most recent Star Wars movie where we got a bunch of Ray variants as well. So this kind of feels... I don't know. I, I don't care for it because I'm not a Star Wars fan. But I also don't care for it because there's a bunch of Ray Pops already, so why would Star Wars fans care about this? Next up, we have our first Funko Soda reveal of Funcon, and that is Kaboom Serial, limited to 3,000 pieces with a color variant chase. Now, with it being a 1 in 6 chase and it being 3,000 pieces, that means that there are only, what, 500 chases of this soda? That's nuts. I'm just going to take a shot in the dark here and assume that this will be going to the Funko shop. I don't imagine a 3,000 piece soda will be going anywhere else. Now in the past we have gotten soda go to other retailers like Hot Topic, but that was like a 15,000 piece soda. So I'm going to bet that this is going to go to the Funko shop. As for what this is, I don't know. I I thought I knew a bunch of ad icons, but I've never heard of Kaboom cereal before. And a lot of the comments on the Instagram posts seem to echo that. So this isn't for me, this isn't for a lot of people, but considering that it is limited, if flippers are going to be going after this, people trying to trade things are going to be going after this, and it's going to sell out super quick, exclusively to the lottery winners. Next up, we have Marvel Year of the Shield, Captain America as a Werewolf, or Cap Wolf. The Year of the Shield line is nuts. I mean, when they first announced this thing with the Winter Soldier, everyone thought it was just going to be MCU, but then we've gotten a whole bunch of other stuff that's Year of the Shield that a lot of people are excited about. We had a MCC box that had nothing to do with the MCU. And now we have Cap Wolf, which is from the comics. And while I'm not personally going to get this pop, it is really, really nice looking. I think the only thing that probably would have made this pop nicer is if it was flocked. And it kind of seems like a missed opportunity not for this thing to be flocked, right? Like if you're going to do a Cap Wolf, give him some fur. And my worry is that down the line, we'll see a flocked version of this be like a, I don't know, like an FYE exclusive or something weird, you know, kind of like a, we got the Comic-Con version, which is normal, but then here's a better version. I don't know. But then again, there's a lot of people out there who really aren't into the whole flocked thing. So maybe this is ideal for a lot of Marvel collectors. If I had to guess where this would be shared to, I'm going to say GameStop. Uh, GameStop tends to get at least one Marvel exclusive every Comic-Con, and this just kind of feels GameStop-y, if that makes sense. It kind of feels like something that I could visualize on a GameStop shelf. I can't really see it at Hot Topic. I can't really see it at Target. So I'm going to say that this will be shared with GameStop. However, I don't know for sure. From Kellogg's, we have the Sugar Smacks seal. And I mean, if anything's going to go to the Funko shop, it is this seal. This thing did not leak, similar to the soda that we talked about earlier in this video. And that's because they're both most likely share with the Funko shop. All of the leaked lists that have happened so far and with pretty much every major convention always leave out Funko shop exclusive items because how would anybody have access to that information if it's going to sit in a distribution center at Funko and then only get sent out to people who ordered it? There's no middleman going from shipping to Funko to GameStop's distribution center, to all the different GameStop stores. It's going to be in the GameStop system, you know? So it makes sense as to why Funko Shop exclusives never leak for convention season. However, personally for me, 
I'm not really into it that much. I sold off all of my ad icons except for a couple of them. Only ad icons I have left in my collection are Buzz the Bee and the uh, Donuts bag because I could chow down on a box of these and a glass of milk and eat the whole thing. And I love Honey Nut Cheerios, so that's why I kept Buzz. But I sold my Flop Tricks Rabbit. I sold my Lucky the Leprechaun. I sold everything. I was like, get it out of here. I'm sick of this. And this seal kind of reinforces that because if I was an ad icon completionist, I'd be picking up stuff that I didn't care about. And I feel like this is something maybe only completionists are going to get. So to the majority of ad icon fans, this is probably a pass. So our next reveal goes from Marvel to DC. We have DC Imperial Palace Deathstroke and Martian Manhunter. Now, while neither of these pops are for my personal collection, they're really cool looking. And I think the whole Imperial Palace line, while I don't Maybe there's a comic run that I'm missing that I don't I don't know anything about. But looking at these as figures, they look fantastic. With the way that Funko's been doing stuff, you would think that they would do another Batman or a Robin or they would do a Superman or something, you know? So it's kind of nice to see them do some, while still very popular characters, some deeper cuts outside of your very generic characters that they always tend to do these things with. But with all of that being said... I still don't care for them that much. They're cool looking figures. Yes. Are they for me? Absolutely not. All right. We're reading this one straight from the phone, y'all. We have total T Tokidoki. Tokidoki. We have Scooter. We have Sabo-chan. We have Caramello. And we have Sandy. What is this? So Sandy and Caramello are confirmed to be shared with Toy Tokyo because on the Funko app they have Toy Tokyo stickers, while Sabo-chan will be a shared exclusive because it has a Comic-Con sticker and a shared sticker. But then you have Scooter, who will be limited to 1,500 pieces and will presumably be show only. So for most conventions over the last year, year and a half or so, we've had one, maybe two show only exclusives. So is this Scooter? from Todi, Todi, Tokidoki going to be the only show only exclusive? Will this be the only non soda piece counted item that we get? And if that is the case, that is severely disappointing. I don't really understand why we need four pops from Todi Koki or Todioki. I don't understand the reason, even for Anchorman last year for San Diego, why give us a whole set as a Comic-Con exclusive? Why not give us a main wave like they did with Todioki and then give us a few exclusives why a whole set variants for comic-con season i don't know i don't care for this i'm actually a little frustrated by this because not only are there going to be two toy tokyo tokidoki exclusives there's going to be a shared one and there's going to be a piece counted one i don't know just a little frustrating and then our last reveal of day two is cobra bat from gi joe which is pretty cool i like seeing gi joe get comic-con exclusives and I think this one looks pretty cool. And I don't know anything about G.I. Joe outside of like G.I. Joe himself. So this is obviously a pass for me because I don't collect the set or know anything about it. But I think it's still cool to see G.I. Joe get some Comic-Con representation. Overall, guys, day two was extremely lackluster for me and kind of disappointing. There wasn't even, there really wasn't anything from this second day that I was like, oh, that that's on the gray area list. Like maybe I'll get it, maybe I won't. Everything from day two was, in my opinion, a flop and I don't care about it at all. And I want to hear what you all think down below in the comments. You listen to me talk, and now I want to hear you talk down below. What do you think of day two? And more importantly, what do you think of Funkon so far? What do you have to have? What do you hate so far? And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it down below and subscribe for more content for me. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to collect what you love, even when what you love is a clown in a can. And as always, I will see you all soon.